Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Muraya Afolawi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Laja, Nima Akasha Zibri, how you doing? I'm fine. Oh, I'm very, very grateful Birthday to weekend. To everybody. It was a birthday on Saturday. It was. Yeah. Thanks to my siblings for the early morning. They actually started me in the mood. And uh, this year, I couldn't do my sober, sober reflection. It was a celebration for my siblings' fault <laughs> night. That's good. That's good. Once I think while. my popularity has overtaken my look to bed this week. They will allow you. <laughs> you think it. They, 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 they will allow you. Yeah. Calmly do and your, have your and low key. And mm -hmm. all of that. So my children didn't even get to enjoy mommy. Oh. But thank you to everyone for the love, for the messages, and the gifts. So thank you, ladies, for the gifts. Thank you. You're so very and welcome. We've been able to empower two people. <laughs> thank you. Oh, um, that's awesome. That's good. Uh, I, I had the train ride on Friday. Yes, how was this? this ah, that's yeah. how somebody should travel. Are you serious? Yes, that's how somebody should travel. You got there. Mm. Sit down. It's, no but the AC was too much. The AC oh. was my own problem. Oh. Ah, somebody prepared me for the AC. Go on. Thank you. But there's no crowd yet. There's no crowd yet. That's probably why. No, it was a full coach. Uh, my own coach was a full coach. Oh, really? And yet, they, I don't know, maybe because it was full, they increased. Ah, my legs. I won't. Uh -huh. was, but it was uh -huh. lovely. I wish you could have been faster you than the, um, the two hours. You called the VIP one or you did the regular? I did the regular. Okay. I got to the train station very late. So I did not okay. have time to be asking questions. <laughs> the train was about to move, so I just booked what I could. Yeah. On my way back, I now, thought, I now got um, heads up that there was no really big no deal difference. About it, so I took the regular back. Okay. Oh, yes. nice. But it was a good ride there. And it back. Was, it was. We need to experience oh, yes. you. Like you can charge your phone, you can walk while you're traveling. Wow. Ah, that's how somebody should travel. Yeah. How are you doing, Tokwe? I'm good. Um, I don't want to throw any spanner into the good news. I just feel like Lagos to Ibado should be like a shorter trip mm -hmm. than the number of time we're spending and whatever. You went to Ibado this weekend? No, 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 no. She went and it, the train is usually two hours mm. to go. I did a retreat sorting out. I feel oh, very yes. sorted. My, my so. darling, it was a prayer session. Like, at a point of, uh, on, on Sunday, my mom said, all the prayer, we prayed on Friday, overnight, prayed on Saturday. Like, the, there's nothing else that has mm -hmm. not been prayed upon. <laughs> so, why are we going to be prayed again? <laughs> I said, mm, let's just be storing up the prayer for our children's yes. children yes. and children's children so yeah. that they will not have to go through any, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Let, 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 let them not have to go through any of the challenges that we went through yeah. or based that's on the society good. and all yeah. of that. So just, that's good. That's it was, good. I had fun and it was loaded, plenty of people. And it was good to see men in a spiritual yeah. event, you know. I had to drag Mr. Mark, but he was so happy he was there, so. Fantastic. Yeah. It's all good. Yes, sir. <laughs> and when they, don't, when, when they don't go through what we've gone through, we have yeah. people like us now judging them for yeah. the success that yeah. you, you people came from. Uh, a silver spoon. Yeah. They will not understand yeah. the mm. processes we're going through. So when we are judging other people yeah. who actually come from silver spoon, we should realize that parents, parents have walked the walk mm -hmm. for them. Privilege. I had a fantastic weekend. Yeah, I, I had friends over. Yeah. We had a good time, girls' night. Food, lots Two of days, food. actually. Lots of food. We did movies, like no, we no, no, watched no, no. Indian movies. We just <laughs> kept going back. Me too, back to back. Back to back. I got back home back. after all the drama. I still watch Indian movies. Oh my God. They have really <laughs> developed here, yeah, Indian yeah. movies. And it was fun. So yesterday was unwinding. I'm ready for the new week. I'm refreshed and um, we're here. <laughs> okay. I had one. Me. It was nice. I hung out with Tobisi, with the girls overnight. And I took the girls, the kids to Rufus. I, I promise I was going to Rufus and B. It was nice, but I had serious car issues. I have never... I've never had this kind of experience where your car just stops and mm. just refuses to move. I had Ooh. to get the toll to take it away. I had to take an Uber home. It was just it was with all the children and oh, Daniel, oh just a God. stressful yeah. situation yeah. on that day. But I thank God, hey, listen, these things happen. Mm. So we'll be, we'll be managing the car right now. Grateful. All right. Let's go on a quick break. It's Monday. So much to talk about. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hey, we're going to be starting with the nation this morning. COVID-19 exposure in the UK. Buhari goes into isolation. Jam heads of institutions to decide cut-off marks for the 2021-2022 admission. Tension over killing of Undo-bound travelers in, in Joss. Contributors move 102.5 billion naira to new pension administrators. 
North Elder seeks solution to regions in security. Naira in mixed performance. VAT FIRS ask court to stay judgment execution. Wuni leads APC governors to woo Ladoja in Ibadan. Let's start with major headline. Our president is isolated. Who has that story? Yes, so according to Garba Show, this is according to in compliance with the NCDC guidelines, the president and all those on his entourage that returned from the UK with him tested, took the, the COVID test and are presently on isolation. The president also is on isolation because according to them, he was exposed to COVID because of the journey. That's according to, but they did not say he tested positive. They so he was exposed to it. Yeah, so maybe someone on the internet tested positive. So they are doing guidelines. Wow. Well, there yeah. should be a standard. It's not whether everybody tested positive. When you come back into a country from another country that you're supposed to just isolate for a, at a least days. a few days mm, before. I so I don't, I didn't know why he was making headline. headlines. Yeah, but he's the president, so yeah. he has to make headlines. Yeah, the joint admissions and matriculation board jam and um, head of tertiary institutions are going to be having a policy meeting on August 31st, uh, where they will decide the minimum cutoff mark for the 2021-2022 admissions. So uh, the Minister for uh, Education, Adamo Adamu, will be chairing this meeting. They said that last year, they, in collaboration with the vice chancellors of universities, rectors of polytechnics, and provosts of colleges of education, they pegged the minimum uh, cutoff mark at 160. So for uh, admissions into the university, 120 for polytechnic and 100 for uh, colleges of education, but this meeting now will chat them away, you know, help them to chat a way forward for the policies and help them to evaluate what happened in the last uh, admissions and probably they will now find out the next cut of mark. Okay. I was going to take the story with the, it says the Northern uh, Elders seek solutions to regions in security. So the former secretary to the government of the Federation, the SGF, Yayale Ahmed, is a convener of this meeting. He has called on five representatives from 19 northern states to come together. They're going to have a meeting today to discuss the uh, issues of insecurity and they're going to be looking beyond what the government has done thus far mm. concerning insecurity and see what else can they do within their own purview to help and support the government concerning insecurity in Nigeria. Let me take the yeah, APC. Um, PDP is alleging that APC has already put in machinery towards the beginning of 2023 elections. Um, specifically because they are saying that INEC has, as a body, has a right to carry out whatever decision will provide free and fair elections. And INEC currently hasn't been able to get appro um, approval for the e-transmission. And they said that they are waiting for the National Assembly to approve e-transmission before they purchase the equipment. PDP is alleged that this is a way to stall the implementation of e-transmission, that if INEC has a co as, is an independent body, they should be allowed to carry out all, as they, seem, as they deem fit, to carry out their actions. They are also rejecting the bringing back of tolls, says that the government has enough to, if they prioritize appropriately, that instead of double taxation, and this is the wrong time to bring back tolls into Okay, the moving on to Daily Sun, Catholic bishops brand Nigeria world's most terrorized nation. Hmm. Um, see that home, Kano's families denies interference in IPOB affairs. NDLA laughs Italy bound woman with 100 wraps of heroin at Lagos airport. UK trips, Buhari others in quarantine since presidency. Outrage over just killings. Atedala reviews how IBB advised Jonathan <coughs> to assume Jaredo's duty before doctrine of necessity. Ulo of worry, squabble over secession, normal in kingdom, says Prince. Okay, we start with taking the sun. I could do um, IPOB. Yes. So, you know, um, there was a sit at home that was planned to be happening every Monday till uh, the IPOB leader has been released by DSS. So... Uh, the younger brother to uh, Namdi Kano, Kanunta, uh, made a statement and, you know, sort of suspended the um, sit at home that was meant to happen. And so the uh, IPOB, uh, some of the leaders of IPOB were upset about it and they, you know, they talked about it. And so he had to do um, a statement through his spokesperson saying that they did not actually stop the sit at home. They did not cancel it. They did not interfere in the program of IPOP. They are actually a part of it, but they just had to do what they needed to do to furthermore strengthen the plan that they have. And they also went further to say that uh, the conversations that they expect the IPOP leader to have with the federal government is not going to happen while he's still in jail. That if they, the federal government wants to have a conversation, he needs to be out of jail and they need to have that conversation. And though they started something like this in 2017, but then he was chased and nearly killed the reason that he ran away and went to another country. So we need to do it in a civil manner. Uh, some other um, 
people are speaking. So I think the Igbo, yes, the Igbo national movement uh, have advised IPOP to carry out their activities in a more decent way, to do things in a different manner. They should have right. negotiations, discussions with elders, and they shouldn't use any form of force. They should have proper conversations so that at least the federal government can listen and they will have like an agreement at the end of the day. All right, so in the NDLA, in their continued nationwide offensive against drugs, they still caught a woman, Mrs. Nandi Nora Chire, who was caught with 100 wraps of heroin and two parcels of same substance at the departure hall. Mutala Mohamed here in Lagos. She was en route to Italy with these drugs. Also, interestingly, they, had, they also had a random search of um, exporting or, or exported items. And they also found, I think, um, 25.8 kilograms of cocaine and cannabis concealed inside foodstuff going to UK. Yes. So even those that are, aside from those that are giving people to travel, they are also exporting it. So hmm. these are random searches, and um, NDLA has called this people. But I would like to use the opportunity to tell Nigerians that we did this conversation. We had this conversation last week. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we'll be having a guest from Heathrow, who she works there, and she's going to help Nigerians understand what and what to look out for when you're packaging stuff and how mm. they how they search mm. for these kind of drugs. So it would be great for you to watch the show tomorrow. Let me quickly take um, following the international. Those following the international story will know that. Um, Taliban have taken over Afghan, Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan um, and there's a lot of um, people trying to evacuate their citizens, yeah. America trying to evacuate their citizens. The reason I'm taking so is because we know Nigerians are everywhere mm. and we would like to see, we, it won't be after some Nigerians now cry out and say they are stranded somewhere. Let's also be a bit proactive mm. in rescuing our citizens because I'm sure there are Nigerians serving there and we have not heard anything from the Nigerian government on how they are trying to rescue Evacuate our people. citizens there. And their presidents have fled. Yeah, yeah the, the president fled, yeah. yeah. He has to say rescue his own wow. life. Yeah. Nobody yeah. has the Catholic bishop story. Oh, I, didn't, I wanted to take that story, but I guess nobody. Okay, let's move on. Inside. I took it, but it was a bit in. Mm, okay. okay. Let's go on a break. Let me see what time it is. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to move on now to the Nigerian Tribune. Major headline, fatal death toll rises to 32. Government declares curfew. 21 army recruits die in auto crash in Jigawa. IBB asks Jonathan to sit on Yarado's chair, says Otedola. INEX stoppage of e-voting machine purchase ploy to rig elections, says Secondus. 2023, Presidency Buhari associates search for Southern legacy candidate. Recover missing 17 billion naira tax within 90 days. Senate orders FIRS. And Taliban forces take over Afghanistan as president flees. Okay. Which story are we taking? Um, the human interest. Let's start with the human interest story. Yes. Yeah, so said, um, story says 21 uh, people that were new army recruits uh, were confirmed dead when two vehicles ran into a culvert at Rabadi village, uh, local government area of Jigawa state. Said the uh, disease was uh, seen to be from Kano State, and they were returning. They were heading to Adamawa at midnight on Saturday when the incident occurred. So it happened. I think it was between. Um, I wanted to get the name of the vehicle. A uh, one Hummer bus, which was conveying 18 passengers from Kano State to Adamawa, and another canter lorry that was um, carrying three passengers, though they don't know the destination. So they've been taken to the morgue. I think out of them, just one person was able to survive. Uh, investigations are ongoing on what exactly happened. Another really sad story, which is going to be our um, topic for today, but just to establish um, in play to the loss of 32 people who their convoy was... Interrupted. Their convoy was interrupted. Um, they were traveling from... Um, they were traveling to Ondo State, and on their way, they were interrupted by a group of people who went ahead to kill... Many of them, the gruesome video went online was when videos, pictures went viral. The state has already imposed a curfew. Exams meant to take place within the University of Plato has been suspended indefinitely. All the students within the university are told to stay within their facility until peace is restored. According to Tribute, they couldn't get a, a conversation with the 
um, in, um, police PRO as of the time of the report, but that they know that the police has deployed, according, officially released that they deployed special intervention team around play two to calm the circumstances. All right, so we're talking there. about that a bit more later. Mm. Uh, Femi Asadullah, <clears throat> the billionaire uh, businessman, was saying, as was felicitating with um, IBB, Ibrahim Garamosi Barangida, um, for his 80th birthday, he'll be releasing a book, uh, Asadullah will be releasing a book in November, and in the book he was mentioning how um, IBB had called him. No, actually, he went to visit IBB because of the lockjam that happened when uh, former President Yaradua was sick. I think it was 2010 when um, uh, there was a lockjam in the, in the, in the governance. And um, he then went to Babangina to ask him as a businessman, what can they do to um, get Niger out of this? And he said, listen, when you get to Abuja next week, tell your friend that um, former, pres former President Jonathan to sit on the seat of the presidency. That because there is no president at the time, Yaradua was like, all the way in UK, and somebody had to take... Um, leadership of the country at the time. So he told him that to get, when you get to Abuja next week, tell him to sit on the seat. And exactly what Jonathan did was to take charge of the of the of the neck meeting at, at the time. Okay, let's move on to the point. Inside APC House of Common, FG gets 500 billion naira for fresh investments in auto industry. Utomi, my lafia agree with Saunisi on failing economy. FG has scant regard for Niger Delta and says Ankyo Briggs. Minister Governor Supremacy Battle may consume APC in Quara. Okay, what story are we taking? Uh, Final billionaire. Yes, yeah, so the federal government through the National Automotive Design and Development Council has attracted over 500 billion fresh investments into the automotive uh, industry. Yes. So this was confirmed by the officials of the NADDC. And uh, the amount that was given was more to boost the capacity of our automobile companies in Nigeria. The investments was made by 20 automobile companies, uh, Dangote, Sinotruck, Innocent, PAN, Cherry, Pojo, Stallion Group, Hyundai, Honda, Elizade, Lanreshi, to JAC, Kojo Nord, Oma, Vista, Jet Systems, National Trucks Manufacturers, GSC, Kia, mm. and Mikano Gili. Now, these companies are already producing, they are already assembling vehicles in Nigeria, and um, they have, you know, combined uh, installed capacity to produce over 400,000 vehicles every year. That's the wow. plan. So this is this is good news, really. All right. Any who has an Utomi story? You have that story? Um, Utomi and Melafia were simply agreeing with um, the former CBN president um, Sanusi, who at his 60th was saying that the country's economy is 40 years stagnant or backwards. And they said, according to them, weak institutions, inconsistent policies, state capture, which displaced our healthy rivalry among ethnic groups on industrialization and, um, you know, make Nigeria compete for industrial, along industrial lines. But Tommy particularly explained how the country was based on exports, you know, uh, of cash crops as the uh, colonial, um, don't call them masters, left it. So, and the countries, the re ethnic groups started to build industries along those areas and continue to foster growth among ethnic, uh, along ethnic competition where you had the Yoruba people do cocoa, you had the, you know, mm. uh, with cash crops. But we, we got to a point where we started these inconsistent policies, we destroyed, we started building more states, trying to, you know, and all of those things displaced us. And um, I'd like to quote the former CBN president, who said... CBN governor. Sorry, CBN <laughs> governor, sorry. He said that, you know, um, in 2014, GDP per capita on purchasing power was ap appreciated by 50% to $3,000, according to the World Bank. Yeah. But no, it, we were, where we were in 2019 was $2,000. At this rate, in the next two years, in terms of purchasing power, the average income of Nigeria would have gone back to what it was in 1980, 1980 mm. under the Shagari. So no that means that 40 years, Nothing. no, no progress. movement. Even me, I was wow. calculating it. So if you're traveling <laughs> between the West African countries, there's a toll we used to pay then. It was 1,000 naira to the city and, all, and, the, and the CFA. It's still the same amount there, but we, you know... Based on our own based, currency. Uh, based on our mm. currency... It, 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 things have not improved. We're, we're just rotating. We have to run. Every time the Naira weakens to the Spainful. dollar. Spainful.
Moving on to Vanguard, he also said that we, really our entire problem, every single thing we are going through is because of the economy. Yes. Mm -hmm. like the agitation, yes, insecurity, yes. all goes right back to the economy. Yes. We have to get that right. Moving on now to Vanguard, just killings can trigger worse conflicts, Sultan oh. warns. Convention fresh crisis looms as PDP governors plots use of 2017 unity list. Sarap to Buhari paid doctor salaries with 4.8 billion now earmarked to monitor WhatsApp calls. Mm -hmm. 2021-2022 admission jam announces cut off mark August 31st. Uh, Afghan president flees. I talked about that already. Otedola recount IBB as Jonathan to sit on Yaradua's chair. Why Boko Haram surrender puts Borno in difficult position, says Governor Zulum. And FG NARD face off moves to industrial court today as strike continues. So I have the FG and the Nigeria, National Association of Resident Doctors. So the unwillingness of the federal government made them go to the industrial court. And this morning, the, NA, the National Association of Resident Doctors have agreed to appear before the industrial court, saying, although these matters could have been settled if the federal government were willing, but since they brought them, they are happy that, you know, they are the industrial courts now. Hopefully we get good judgment and we get judgment that both sides or either mm. side will, will, be, will be able to settle. Yeah. So the socioeconomic rights and accountability project, Sarah, Yesterday, are urging the president, Mohamed Buhari, to urgently redirect the proposed spending of 4.8 billion of public funds to monitor WhatsApp messages, phone calls, and text messages of Nigerians to pay some of the salaries of the resident doctors in the country. They are saying that out of the new uh, supplementary appropriation bill, they had earmarked about 893 billion. Mm. And out of that, 4.8 will be used to monitor our conversations. And they're saying this is against the fundamental human rights, yes. that every appropriation bill must conform to the Constitution. And what is against the fundamental human rights should be redirected because there are a lot of vulnerable pe persons who would need good quality medical care that cannot access it in public... Uh, uh, who, um, quality medical care that cannot access it in other hospitals apart from public hospitals. They don't have a choice then. So if that money is used to ensure that these resident doctors are paid, we'll be getting somewhere as against. So mm. they send this letter on the 14th of, um, dated 14th of August, and they're saying that if the federal government does not respond, they will take it further. I missed the very important data here on Vanguard. It says domestic borrowing jumps to 20.6%, mm -hmm. inches towards $4 trillion. So they get a quick breakdown. About 50% of that money, $2.31 trillion is coming from the Treasury bills. Mm -hmm. uh, about, um, I think, 10 point, uh, no, 0 0.6 trillion is from the savings bond, and then the FGN bonds is about 1.6 trillion. Now, these are Critical. really, really hard economic issues or domestic borrowing, mm -hmm. how much are the debt And then in pay. order of priority, we now want to use it to monitor so when we have hospital bills. Calls yeah. and phone calls. So we, we really need to discuss issues of debt. <sighs> okay, News Direct commercial banks borrow 9.97 trillion from CBN in seven months. FG plans to employ audit firm to, this, to disclose debt repayment, says Zachary. SEC reiterates commitment to clamp down on illegal capital market operators. Unilag VC calls for decentralization of TET fund. Uh, Deep Blue's project, Nimasa, will ensure proper maintenance of assets, says Jamo, and VAT collection FRS files appeal against court judgments. Okay, which story are we taking there? Who you has a, the... the FG2. Yes, audit firms. Audit firms. Audit yeah, that story. So the, 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 um, special assistant to the president of uh, infrastructure was saying that, yes, that admitted that, you know, they, they are owing the discourse. The federal government is owing the discourse, but now they need to get auditors to, to, um, be, to audit the amount owed and, you know, uh, ask advice on how the monies will be paid to the discourse. So this is an admission of what the discourse have been clamoring that, you know, they are being old and this is affecting their services. And my fear is that why do we need external auditors to audit money when we owe? You know, we have the, the, the accountant general's office. We have several accountants there we could have assigned to do this and, you know, just pay. Another, another, another misplaced priority. Exactly. Are they going to pay the external auditors or are they doing it for free? No. no. Are we not for free trying now? to be cutting down costs? Because mm. I don't mm. get it. We always find a way. Sure there's a reason for it. Mm. No, we, we, for, every, for every debt recovered, we have consultants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For every we debt owed, we go seek a consultant. Mm. And we pay the them. One so the people, where would they pay? They don't pay you the work? We still have consultants for the one. I don't get it. We have to run soon. The vice chancellor, University of Lagos professor, Ugunjipe has said that we need to decentralize um, TED fund, uh, which is the trust fund 
that's established to help universities in Nigeria. So he's saying that currently it's the, the, the funds are centralized and there's so much bureaucracy in getting our funds to actually help. So we need to decentralize such a, either having state chapters or regional chapters, I think. I'm not sure what he said, but we're saying that we must have either state chapters or regional chapters to make it easier for universities to I, have I access to these I think in all funds. sectors, once the center is too powerful, other people, some people will not get the yeah. equal share of yeah. what should be True. available. So the same thing, make it available. Regional. Regionalize every situation so that people will not be complaining okay. so much. We have to run. Any other story in the Guardian? Cargo issuance premium spike over on Tidy Road access. Seaports operations. Oh, Nima would have liked that story. Like Government places too. just on 24 hour indefinite curfew. Okay, so Joss is definitely on the hearts of many Nigerians this morning. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about it a bit later. But first, when we go on a break, we'll come back with our hot topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So today we're going to be discussing something of concern to many parents. Um, issue of punishment in school. How do you discipline children <laughs> appropriately in schools? Um, there are two stories we're going to be referencing. One is um, from, uh, from Abuja. Uh, allegedly, a young man, Yahaya Nuhu Aliu, a GSS2 student of Federal Government College, Kwali Abuja, was allegedly killed by a teacher in the school. According to the report, this young man wasn't feeling very well. He went to school and he was accused of not doing his assignment. And then the teacher took the handle of a bucket and hit him several times on his head. He fell, he, he fell flat. I mean, he, he collapsed, rushed mm. to the hospital. By the time he got there, he was dead. Mm. Another story, according to reports, a GSS1 female student of secondary school in Ado Ekiti has also filed a lawsuit against the Ekiti state government over suspension from school for an indecent hairstyle. Join the conversation, 0812705 You can also send us messages on YouTube and on Facebook. We'd like to read your comments. Um, so the issue of punishment. So growing up, many schools, uh, have, many young people went through this process. We're either bullying from your seniors, from your teachers. You get to fetch water even when you're sick. You know, this young lady, according, she's filing uh, suits, but she, according to her, she had a haircut. And she put in the, so this mark, I don't know what they call it, um, a pattern. Mm -hmm. And it comes some kind of fancy, funky pattern. And she was, she was, she was beaten so up and um, to Tw the point 20, where 20, 20, 20, slashed, strokes. 20 strokes, 20 lashes. Mm -hmm. And this young man also, he did not do his assignment. And they hit mm -hmm. him with a bucket. So where do we draw the line between discipline and children? What is, what is acceptable in schools? What is discipline? What is... I mean, how do, we, how do we draw the line as educators? And I'd like to start with BC because I know that's your sector. Yeah, so what I, are your thoughts on this? So I think, first of all, teachers and school owners need to understand their role. You know, when uh, a, the purpose of a thing is not defined, abuse is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Your role, first of all, is to impact knowledge in these children. And peradventure, you want to make any form of correction when it comes to their behavior. It's not your job to do it alone. You, you, you go hand in hand with the parents of the child to correct any behavior that's not working for that child. Mm. And so when you understand your role, and you see certain Wait, let things. Let me be clear, I understand. Okay. So there's academic role, yes. and there's the behavioral. So yes. you say that when it comes to academic, yes. do 100%. Do 100%. When it comes, when when it comes to behavior, behavior, because you are not the owner of the child, yeah. you must do it with the parents. Got you. Okay. With the, the responsibility must be shared. You must, for every correction and every punishment you want to make must be agreed with the parents. Okay. You cannot just take, you know, things into your own hands and feel because I'm the teacher, I can beat you, I can kill you, I can bucket you, I can do everything. No, 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 that's not your job. When we as educators and school owners, so for private schools, they are beginning to understand where their role ends. But we still see that most public schools have not really, you know, come to that understanding that I'm here to impact these children. And if I see anything that is not working for them, mm. I will work hand in hand because you also need follow up from the parents at home. So the, 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 the act 
act of corporal punishment is something that educators have argued over and over that this is not working. Parents right now are understanding that beating our children is not working. It's not giving us the result that we want. Why can't we have conversations? Why can't we make these children understand? Because they are human beings by mm. themselves. Mm. I remember there was a time uh, my son went to school and he had gum. He took the gum from his father's uh, shelf mm. and he was trained in class. And the teacher came, took the gum, put it on his head and pulled ah! the hair. I nearly ran mad. How dare you? <laughs> he said, because I just wanted to punish him to stop chewing gum. Did you call me to tell me your son is chewing gum and is not allowed? That girl that they cut, that they flocked 20 strokes, why don't you send her home? This is not an acceptable haircut. Go home and come back with the right or call the parents to come to school. Okay. Why don't we do things so, the right let, way? So, let, let so me... we need to understand. My, mm. my point here is, let us understand our roles mm. as educators and as parents and everybody should fill in their roles. Let, 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 um, um, Tucker, let me come to you because uh, we're all parents here. And what, let me use the example she used. So teachers have punished us. I mean, growing up, you have this kind of punishment where they will give you something really, really, um, I mean, out of the ordinary because just to, as a sign of punishment mm. to you. But does that work today? Can, well, I, I, think it, work? I think it even worked then. I think that we need to separate... We need to understand that corporal punishment builds and breeds rebellion. Mm. So we tend to feel like when you are compelled to obey, that is obedience. No. What you have just done is imposed your power over me, and I would obey you in front of you. But you haven't corrected me. You have built rebellion in me. So many children conform to the laws in front of the people. Mm. I believe that for a society to develop, there must be punishment and um, there must be laws and punishment that will be acceptable by everyone. So mm. the PTA, the ch parents should be aware that if a child has an, an inappropriate hairstyle, this is the way we punish. And everybody feels like, yes, 20 strokes of cane is a good enough way to punish. Ha. If all of them had agreed to it, and the children had a handbook that states that inappropriate air cuts deserve the punishment of 20 strokes of cane, hey. then when the, the child knowingly being aware of that has... A, a bad haircut, a, an inappropriate oh, haircut, yes. then the child will get the appropriate punishment as already agreed. In this case, was there a handbook stating what is qualified as an inappropriate haircut? No. Was there an agreed punishment by the university, the school, I mean, the, school. Se, the school body that the parent is aware of? No. So when a child comes, it is left to the mood of the teacher. The punitive measures cannot be based on your emotions because every time you use emotions to to penalize someone, you will either overdo or underdo. It doesn't work. Yeah. So if I'm feeling angry, I can overbeat a child. If I'm in a good mood, I can let the child go. There must be consistency when you're raising exactly. children. If not, you will not achieve a positive result. Exactly. So in this case, I am extremely happy that we are finally getting some sense on how to use our legal sector to find and bring proper structure yeah. to society. So this is a good way to go. Yeah. And ho hopefully, they will not demonize one teacher because all teachers are doing it. Yeah, In this yeah, case, so. don't demonize one teacher. Deal with the system yeah. that allows teachers to, yeah. as they feel, mm. punish each child. Let, let, me, let me come to you on this. OK, so it's, it's OK to punish. I went to a school where the motto of the school was knowledge and discipline. Oh, I was thoroughly beaten. <laughs> I was thoroughly beaten because I was not the calm Nima as a child. But they were out of proportion abuse of, clear abuse of powers by teachers and some of the military um, personnel in my school. It was too obvious for, to make any sense. So for that reason, I would support the young lady in her court action. She did not conform to the school rules clearly mm -hmm. because it was a public school, which is why she's suing the state government. And generally, among public schools, the standard is not to have that air cut that she came to school with. Mm -hmm. But 20 strokes of cane is totally out of proportion to the offense in question. Yeah. So there was clearly an abuse of power by the school teacher. And I hope that her lawyers are doing the draft well so that the teacher himself or herself is a party to the action. So the way we allow these things happen in some schools and call it a discipline, it's something that parents themselves should look into. I always say that I would love my child to go to the school I finished from for the basis of knowledge and, you know, to, to, to give a child a proper standard to life. Well, but I will not allow the kind of discipline in the I name of whatever guys I suffer. Mm -hmm. So we had a situation in school where a classmate had lost her property on the field, was later found on the field. They rolled out, and per class we have about 70 to 80 people. In my, in my set then, my own class diamond was about 80 of us. They wrote out everybody. 
Nobody, they did not search anybody's bag. They kept asking us who took the fabric. Was she supposed to bring fabric to school in the first place? No. But she did bring fabrics to school. She was saying they sent her to give someone. Well, I know earlier, um, this was mentioning the fact that the, t the, role, the, the role of the teachers is to help and assist. Now, if we look at public schools, most public school students, that's the truth, many of the people that attend public schools today are people, because many people go to, many, many poor families go to low-income private schools. Mm. The public schools either the house helps, are, are, are either people who are extremely, extremely poor, that they don't even have any options to pay at all. So in those kind of cases, those parents are often not involved. Mm. So the teacher feels like I am your father, mother, everything. I am you at my I need to ensure you don't become so, a guru. Yes. Mm. So in that kind of situation where the teacher feels like this, there, there's no help coming from anywhere, I am the one to discipline you, and they will, they will discipline you based on their own discretion. Mm. So how do we how do we help that kind of situation? Yeah. So I think that's why uh, the uh, Ministry for Education needs to step in, especially when it comes to public schools. You need to start having conversations with parents. You need to find a way to get parents involved. And I know that because everybody's hustling and they are out there looking for ways to gather the small, small money to pay the fees, they may not have the time, but they need to find the time to understand the best ways to handle this sort of situation. Now, um, you know, how, how do we now determine a, a punishment that is commensurate to the, to the offense? So... Uh, 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 if you say, let us gather as a PTA and we say, for instance, 20 strokes for this so so and so, shouldn't we ask ourselves if, if this is infringing of the, on the human rights of the child? Do we even understand that this child has a human right? And how do we follow it up from there? So government needs to step in. The commissioners of education need to step in. These teachers and uh, principals of the school need to understand that our role here is different from what we are carrying on. Now, I was told as a classroom teacher that one of the reasons you are not allowed to touch a child is, first mm. of all, to protect you and the school. Mm. Because they have realized that teachers most times beat the children out of frustration. Even we as parents now, when you are frustrated and your child does something, instead of just tapping on the bum bum, you carry a glass cup and you throw. We have people who have anger management problems mm. and they are classroom teachers. We have people who have other issues that are, you know, disturbing right. them and they are right. classroom teachers. So it's first of all to protect you. The child that has died now, mm. that teacher is in trouble. Mm. The, the school, school is in trouble. Right. But that teacher yeah. didn't know. We need to regulate. It's, we're talking about the formative years. Mm. Mm. So you use buckets. Are you there? No, no, you can't use You're buckets. You're live. Go That's ahead, please. That's the point. Hello? Hello, okay, we lost that call. So you're going to respond to what she said so concerning you. Yeah. That is totally out of proportion. But we need our regulators to do the right thing within right. schools. Mm. So the principals of schools... Of course, their job is to walk around school and uh, ensure that the teachers are not killing children in yeah. their, in their mm -hmm. classes. So a child who comes to class and didn't do his own work, what the teacher should have done is find out why. The least you can do is say, okay, where's the report from the health center if it is within the school and if it is not, if it's from home, you yeah. bring one. You don't beat Where's a child your mommy? Your daddy? No, you don't beat a child with a bucket over the head. Yeah, but course. if a child has an inconsistent a, a consistent behavior of missing classes or not, you have to do something about it. It's not about you just beating the child. It's not about beating the child. Wait, where's the corrective power of the school? Mm -hmm. Call the parents at any time? No. Yes. So I believe you call the parents. These are exceptional cases. No, no, no. I believe you call the parents. I believe you advise to withdraw. I believe you suspend the child. Yes. I believe that there, there are many known yeah. corporal or punishment non measures. Because you see, we, this beating thing is something yeah. that we, because we grew up seeing it happen all around us, and we feel like we thought that okay, we turn it into a normal thing, but it isn't normal. Which okay. And children are not. We, we respond differently to things. It's like when they say, "Don't get, don't let your anger push you into fighting," because you don't know what the other child, the other person is carrying. Mm. This boy was not feeling fine, so you you might just have just pushed the boy a little bit, and you tip him over the edge, mm. and, it, and, it, and this boy died. Yeah. So you are now no. in a case where you are. Boy, he didn't push that you had. He just, was he didn't a whole lot more. He did a lot. He did. He did, he did a whole lot more. Let me take this call. Koi Sola, you're live. Are you there? Good morning, Koi Sola. Right. Yeah. Oh, Prince Shola, I do apologize. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. Morning, morning, and the team. Good morning. Yes, I'm very happy. Yes, I'm very happy to to get to the few ladies uh, this morning. You see, the topic you are discussing, you see. Uh, we 
we have to be very careful in that country, in our country, Nigeria, mm -hmm. in the sense that we have a culture and we have things we do in Nigeria. I went to Mayflower School where I was paid by Saito Lani there in the 70s with cutlass. I did not die. That is one of the things that <laughs> made me whom I am today. Mm. You see, there was a discussion in the 90s that I've been here now for a, a, a bit. But I came into this country, United Kingdom, in 1988. In the 90s, there was a discussion then. I was studying. I, I used to work, because you know in England you have to work. I was working in North Sweden today, in St. George's, I was it. I was in a, um, I was in a, uh, what this called? Elderly care, uh, you know, ward. We call it a geriatric. In that ward, we were discussing, and the old people were saying to us that in 70s, a lot of people come to their media, just like what you ladies are doing now. And they were criticizing a lot of things that, like, I'm not, I'm not saying what you are doing is wrong. Please get me right. And they said in the 70s in the UK, they came to the telly, they were saying all sorts of things about this is how you do, deal with child, this is what you, you do. And that is what comes out the UK. Look at the children now that they were breeding in the UK now. They are monsters because nobody is telling them the wrong and the right. Okay. Point taken, Prince Chola. So there are different versions, and I know the guys are itching to respond, <laughs> but there are, there, are, there are different versions of this because the truth is that, you know, some people, that's one analysis. And that analysis, analysis could say that with all our beating, how many airlines are we, are we invented? Mm. With all the beating and the, there, there, there are ways you mold a child that stops a child's creativity and ability to actually go above and beyond what they ordinarily do. So people can see from different perspectives. But how do you interpret what he's saying that this is how many of us are raised and that's what produced who we are today. That's but who we are today, is it, is it the right person? Okay, that so we're, we're raising conformists. Ahead. We're raising conformists. We're not raising creatives. You know, we're not raising problem solvers. You know, problem solvers had to now learn and re uh, re unlearn a lot of things that, were, uh, that had boxed them into the way they should grow. I believe that there's a difference between right and wrong. And we must raise our children so that and there is right and there is wrong. There's appropriate, there's inappropriate. There's a way trousers to sit, sit on your body and the way trousers should sit on your body. There are things that are good and there are things that are bad. And there must be punitive measures because if they, whatever, a society that has no laws, everything would go into disarray. There'll be chaos. <laughs> Where there are, no, there are no laws being followed, there'll be chaos. So if you want to raise your children right, there must be structures to raise that child and punitive measures for when they disobey or fall out of the structures. Okay. If not, you will raise chaotic Nima, children. So, so it's second, not that we should become yeah. like the Western world because, right. yes, we've seen how yeah. the lack of any form of punitive measure has discipline. made them discipline created lack of morals. So we can't still have it. We can create our own system. We've seen mm -hmm. other countries that work. We don't, need, we don't need to always adopt every other person's style. Yeah. We, ha we are human beings, so, and we should create so, our so own. Because, I, because, I, because I'm working with the, uh, with the Education Ministry, and I have informi information on the fact that the program in the state is doing, Eco Excel, does totally bars caning any of the children mm -hmm. because they have measures. They have mm -hmm. measures that are built in into the system on how to... Um, help a child. So there are ways you stand up, you face the wall, you, you use your break time, you know, or yeah, you sit corner, you, you're isolated. Isolated. There are different ways to make a child feel like this. I have committed a crime. Mm -hmm. And Not I need to face so a There was a time we went into this inspection where myself and the commissioner were walking around and we saw it, a cane. The commissioner was asking, so who is this cane for? Because mm. I just need to, to, to make them, to make, they make them sit down. Fear, mm. ah, we don't want <laughs> you to have this in here. So <laughs> it's, it's going to take a long time mm -hmm. to purge ourselves of this system yes. because we all grew up in this so, system. So, Moriah, what I learned in my years of being a Montessori directress, we, 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 they exposed us to a lot of child psychology. And one of the ways that you are judged is your ability to manage the classroom without raising your voice and lifting a cane. Your ability to manage, to get the children to listen to you, to get the children to calm down without shouting mm. and raising a cane. Mm. That tells you that you are a good teacher. Mm. You know how to get these children to be active. You know how to get the children to be involved in the activities. And I also want to say that the, we always look at ourselves and say we turned out okay. Really? 
We don't know how to have communications. We don't know how to have deep communications. Anything happens, everybody's temper is flying yeah. everywhere. On the street, you, somebody hits your car, you see slaps flying, you see spits flying, you see everybody, everybody behaves like there's something Uncivil. pursuing us. Yeah. We are so angry, we are very impatient because of our, of our upbringing. Aggression has been Because of system. aggression that has been inbuilt in our system. Programmed. Some of us now are learning to you know, understand ourselves, understand our emotions and be calm. It's a process for a lot of people. Those people who are not even self-aware, you see how they act when issues come up. Because we did not learn the simple acts of having conversations, the simple act of showing our emotions without hitting and throwing things. And the informative uh, um, uh, part of a child's life is from zero to six or seven years. If you can teach a child that you can actually express anger without being calm and expressing yourself, telling them exactly how you feel, tomorrow that child will grow as an adult who can look at the wife and have a conversation, not throw slaps. Yes, exactly. So that is what we're trying to avoid. Thank I'm you, not Christine. saying there is no punishment that should be meted. We should met out punishment. Well, we, even ourselves, we know how to talk to our children mm -hmm. these days. We're learning how to talk to them these days and get them to serve their punishment. No yeah. TV, no this, no that. Let me take and this we call, get what we want. Tola, are you there from Oshodi? Yeah. I'm You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. Um, I think this uh, topic we are discussing, we need to balance it. We need to balance it. Yeah. In the sense that uh, while we, I'm in my 40s and my marriage clearly, so I know what happened with my son. We were, I can say, we were on the better side because of our culture. But right now, something happened a few years ago. My son just called me from the school. He's a kind of a social guy, trying guy, he was a social prefect, he was in the private school. So he called me and said, oh, dad, I need you to come to my school tomorrow. I said, why? He said, just come. I know normally he will, he will call his mom to come. You know, he said, don't allow my mom to come. Just You just come. And I got to the school, the principal and the guardian counselor told me, please, you know your child has a lot of influence in this school. And he's having a haircut that would not all Sorry, we lost that. Children, Did you, I didn't, I didn't you know, he said, yeah, the principal called, the principal and the guardian counselor told me that your son is with an airport that we do not want in this okay. school, and a lot of children are having that airport. Yeah. And because of his influence in the school, oh, as a special prefect, we want him to cut the hair, hair. but he doesn't want to cut the hair. So what oh, did you do, sir? So what we happened? lost him. Mr. Tola, are you still there? Yeah, I, I told him, I told the boy that he needs to cut the hair. But he said, he was telling me, oh, this is how, look at Obama's hair, look at uh, uh, my husband, look at, I said, he's Nigeria, you need to cut your hair. Mm. And he did. But he was crying. But I could see the communication between the school, mm. myself, and the child. Mm. So he came to understand. He was mad. He was angry. But later, he got to understand as uh, the normal mm. thing. Mm. Another thing happened like three days ago. A friend called me from the UK. She went to the UK with the family. He said, so a family invited them to come over to spend the weekend. A white family, a pure white family. <laughs> we lost you again. You said pure white family. I think we have to. So he's just I think addressing the, the conversation to Nima. What, what are your thoughts on what he said? And the fact that the child is an influencer in school mm. because you're a social prefect. That's, that's and the, you need to make some sacrifices. The spiral effect of mm. certain disobedience in school. Remember when the QC mm. trended? Mm. If you had allowed it to pass, and you know that one, they were even trying to be civil. That was a parent pushing back and, and dragging the security man over her child. So some parents themselves need discipline. Yes, mm. so they lack it. Because they're a product so, of. But you cannot continue to have standards broken in school mm -hmm. as a school system and do mm. nothing. I believe that um, Kenan is a shortcut. Mm. to disciplining the child. Yes, I like it. that. But there are situations where you need to stand yeah. your ground. And if it involves Suspension. Setting, setting limited form of caning yeah. or, or, or punishment, yeah. make the child stand out in the, uh, at the assembly, you know, call out what that child has done as wrong. Some of those things, are, there was a case of beating of boys against girls while mm. we were in school. And they called out the boys. And they called their parents and to come to school them. and shamed them. Yeah. So, you know, those are some of the methods. So that that guy will know to be caught beating a woman in, in future is wrong. Yeah. We need to wrap up on this. this but, uh, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we might have to move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
thanks for staying with us. So before you, we move on to the other topic, we're going to wrap up on the last. We have quite a number of comments. And yes. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, please. Talk Dorothy Onyegula says, um, mm -hmm. I remember a session in secondary school. I brought, a pen, I brought a pen to school, and the pen was stolen. It was the day I was supposed to write a computer science test. I wrote the test with a pencil, and I actually scored 2020 in the test. My teacher flogged me and had marks on my hand and still gave me zero. My mom went to this, because I didn't have a pencil, my mom went to the school that there's no, it does, she doesn't have any problem with um, me being beaten or disciplined, but not to put marks on the child. Mm. Moreover, the offense for which she's being punished wasn't necessary. Yeah. Um, the girl uh, passed, she did well, 2020, yeah. and you still and gave so her a zero. Let me take this call, then I'll come back to you. Moyilolu, are you there? Yes, I am. Good You're morning, live. Man. Go ahead, please. Okay, I remember a situation when I was in SS2 back then in school, and I missed my step. My leg was swollen, like I was in pain. I could not walk with that leg. Practically, my friends carry me to class, and they take me back to the hostel. We're all girls in the school, and um, we went for physics practical that day. The teacher delayed us. And we had our English teacher waiting for us in class. The practical rooms are far from the classrooms. Coming back to the class, the, pre um, the teacher was like, everybody should run. I could not run. So I was trying, my friends were helping me, but she asked them to leave me alone. We all, so they had to leave me. I struggled to come into class. Mm. Those of us, she gave a time lapse. So those of us that could not catch up, she asked us to kneel down. I could not kneel down with this leg. Oh, and this woman was like, she wasn't going to pity me. She said I should sit on the floor, stretch my hands first. And we see teachers do these things a lot of times to students. Lack of empathy. Even mm. then, they can see that this mm. child physically mm. cannot, is not full wrong for what offense they are trying to punish them for. And as brothers, we see seniors doing the same thing. Yes. yes. Because they have seen their teachers doing yes. these things over exactly. and over again. I remember mm -hmm. my side when we were in SS1. This girl had a, a very serious health challenge. She missed the whole term because of what punishment. And these things happen over and over again. And we know that as brothers, most of us spend more time in school than we do with our parents. Mm -hmm. You see students come back home, they bully their siblings at home. Lack of empathy, they fight and all of that. Where do they learn them from? These teachers are not leading by Thank example. You. Thank you, Moe. I mean, Thank you so much. Moe's, um, she took it example, out of my mouth. I think we're going to have mm -hmm. to have to have this conversation again. again. Mm -hmm. We bring in regulators, we bring in yeah. different um, stakeholders and see what we can do to help um, people, young teachers especially, to know how better to discipline um, young people. Let me take this call. William from Abuja, are you there? Yes, oh, I think we... Morning. Oh, Williams, go ahead. You're live, please. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, so, um, again, let me just say to you, against popular opinion, me, I am against flogging, flogging a child. Mm. Um, I'm speaking from personal experience. As a child, I was, I was completely emotionally unstable mm. because of pain. I hated to see pain, but... I could not even learn until I met a teacher in my nursery tree. And he was, he, he didn't have to, I just needed words of affirmation from this teacher, and I was mm. good. When I mean good, I moved from the last of the class to like the second best in the class. Imagine. So I'm, I'm totally against change. Like the children can learn. The children can learn. There are better ways to make them learn. Right. So, thank you, me, Williams. I'm against here. Yeah. Thank you. I have Honor from calling, uh, calling from Niger State. Good morning, Honor. Are you there? Yes, I am here. Good morning. You're live. Go I ahead, please. Need... Yeah. Um, so as um, regards uh, the flogging, some of the punishments we give to children are extreme. You know? I don't, I, I don't know why. It, when I got into Genesis 1 in 1997. At nine years old, so a child in Genesis 1 that you are giving 20 strokes of the cane, for crying out loud, how can you give a child that is probably nine or 10 or 11, 20 strokes of the cane? Is that not extreme? <laughs> that is extreme. <laughs> you know? So, and then the child too has a fault. In those days when we're growing up, you don't see girls who pat on their head. You know? So I don't, I, I really don't get 
<laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know why a girl would. We know what the we know what the, the system is. We know what is acceptable in the school. So a, a child who comes to school with a pack knows that that part on your head. Probably she has not. She was not the first person that made that has come with that kind of hairstyle, and it was corrected. So maybe they were using her as an example, mm. and then, then for the other child who was killed, the handle of his pocket for crying out loud. As in. So, I mean, I think we all we are all on this table somehow because even I, I mean, I, I know I've mentioned this on on this show before where I tried to spank my daughter. I was using a belt, a small belt to spank her. I told her to stretch out her hand. As I was stretching her hand, as I was putting the whip over her, it went straight to her face. Hmm. Imagine if it mark. was the eye. I started crying. I said, hey, Father Lord Almighty, because I want to discipline a child. The mark was there for weeks, I think about wow. about I teachers in school they kept asking, What happened to your face? And my mommy's right. I brought you that arrested. They would have arrested me abroad. Because <laughs> <you. laughs> the mark was right there. I mean, thank mm. God that's cleared now. But I felt sorry. Mm. But how can I, my mother, because she, I can't remember what she did. So the point is that we are all learning that mm. yes, we spanking was part of our parcel of our growing mm. up. Did he say us? Did he work? Now, some people, we've said it here, can aesthetic students do need spanking? There are mm. children that are auditory, that are, um, they, they, they are, they are different types of children. But somebody who feeling, who feeling is your own thing. Mm. Spanking is, 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 is appropriate, but maybe not too extreme. Yeah. And now how do you define what's extreme is where we really leave the whole, So, uh, I mean, for that kind of aesthetic, I don't believe it because I am kind of aesthetic as well. And spanking did not do anything no, positive no, for no, me. No, hey, no, don't go there. Don't this. go there. I was so used to it that I would do something and then go and kneel down and raise up my hand. Daddy, come and beat me. It was that bad. And so I grew up. I'm starting to learn now not to hit my children. When I started having kids, I, before you say two times I've hit, you know, I'll just give it to you. I, I think can't. the teaching also helped me to build that. But let us understand that children have emotions. And the job of a teacher is to get them to a stable emotion so that learning can take place. Mm -hmm. When you destabilize the emotions of these children, they are not able to learn. And so in class, you're saying this one is Olodo, this one is that. That child is not functioning well because of how harsh you are how you may have been beaten. She has seen you. There are some children you beat others and they are shaking. Mm. They have not touched them. They've not done anything to you. It affects them. If we need to go back and understand how the uh, psychology of a child works and show yes. empathy. So assume everybody in your class is your child. Would you give your child 20 strokes of the cane that blood will be oozing out of their body? Let us okay, ask ourselves we need to wrap that. On this. Thank you very much, ladies. Uh, we'll continue to follow up on the story of the young lady that sued the state government of the Kitty State. For the uh, for her getting 20 strokes of cane for, uh, for her haircut, and our family, our hearts go out to the family mm -hmm. of Yaya who lost his life because his teacher beat him with the hand of a bucket. Mm -hmm. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we move on to this the, the killings that happen in Joss. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us. According to reports, 32 people were killed and 14 injured during an attack on travelers in Garabiu, in northern part of Plato State. The victims were in a convoy of five buses and were traveling from Bochi State to Ikare in Undo State, where they were attacked. We'll show you this clip of the report and then we'll come back with the conversation on this. Watch this. The recent attacks Killings and counter killings being perpetrated by lawbreakers in Plato State has become a thing of serious concern and worry. More than 50 people are confirmed to have lost their lives in the state just within 14 days, and all efforts to put an end to these dastardly acts seems not yielding positive results at the moment. The killing of 25 commuters Saturday morning along the Kubarod community. A suburb of just the state capital has received wide condemnation across the country. The aftermath of the Saturday killings had resulted in the imposition of 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, first in three council areas of the state, which include just north, just south, and then Bassa. Despite the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew imposed Saturday evening by the state government, some angry youths refused to obey the other. Instead, they took to the street Sunday morning, blocking major roads within the city metropolis, again attacking innocent passers-by in reprisal to Saturday's attack. 
The state government, in order to avert a further escalation of the situation, quickly imposed a 24-hour curfew, restricting this to just not local government area, where the activities of the irate youths pose a serious threat to the people. Leaders of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Plato State Chapter, and that of the Jamaatu Nasrul Islam in the state condemn the action and call on all Plato State residents to let go their differences and coexist together for the sake of peace. What has happened actually? Thanks for staying with us. So we have with us two guests in the studio, um, <coughs> Dr. Makut Simon Makam, who is the Director of Press and Public Affairs to the Governor of Plato State. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. And we also have Chinge Dodo, who is a former president, Irigwe Youth Movement, Plato State. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning, TVC. Yeah. Good morning, viewers. Good morning. So let us, let's start with Dr. Makut. Um, we know that the government have declared a state um, uh, curfew, a, a curfew for, 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 that, for the state right now. What's the update concerning arrests that have been made? And what's going on? What's the police saying? And where are we with the investigation as of this morning? Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, this is an opportunity to give an update. Uh, as of the evening yesterday, the uh, security heads in Plateau State met with the governor to brief him on the developments uh, regarding the curfew, the arrest, and the search for those that were still missing. Um, as I said yesterday, uh, about 30 people or so were, have been arrested, while uh, 36 other people were recovered um, on hurt. Uh, some of them uh, were actually um, hidden by uh, people around the community uh, when they sought refuge and were kept until the security forces uh, could uh, reach them to get them. Uh, so a uh, continuous uh, search for uh, perpetrators is ongoing. And um, uh, yesterday morning, uh, the tension was very high within uh, just north and uh, a lot of um, confusion in the morning. And so the governor had to, on the advice of the security head, impose a 24-hour curfew on just north in order to um, prevent uh, escalation of the situation. Right. Uh, right. The commissioner of police uh, made mention um, in the evening yesterday that about seven people were killed um, uh, from the skirmishes of the morning. So okay. uh, as of now, just north is under 24-hour curfew, and then uh, just south and Basa uh, are still observing the dust-to-down uh, dust curfew. Right. Okay. Let me come to Mr. Chinge Dodo. Um, as former president of the Irigwe Youth Movement in Plato State, Reports have alleged that Irigwe youth were responsible for these killings. Could you give us an update on, <clears throat> on that? What exactly, is that true? And if it is, what exactly was their grouse that, that, that caused them to carry out these killings? Let me first and foremost condemn these atrocities from fellow human beings to fellow human beings and to also say that it is very, very unfortunate, it is very, very embarrassing, it is quite astonishing for a security agency that is yet to carry out its own duty to come out to say clearly that a particular tribe is responsible for killings. Mm -hmm. Let me also inform our listeners and viewers that on Saturday morning, when we all assemble at Plateau Hospital, Plateau Hospital, by the way, is like three, four kilometers to Rukubaro, venue of the incident. It is where people were mourning the death of their beloved ones, and we were to give them a mass burial. Mm. On reaching the police headquarters along Jos, we came across a convoy of security personnel, that is personnel operation seven, who we are on their way to Kubaro to rescue or to be at the scene of this attack. Unfortunately, we were stopped at a particular junction and we are asked to turn back and follow another route to our village called Miango, where the mass burial was to take place. And when we were doing the, the mass burial, we read a statement by the police accusing our people, a people who are mourning their be beloved ones, a people who are bereaved, a people that since 2017 has been under series of attack and yet no victims, no attacker has been arrested. And then we hear the police accusing us. This is most unfortunate to say the least. And people are made to believe that people are responsible 
for this killing. May our viewers and listeners know that this is completely unprofessional by the police. Investigations are on. How are they able to know that this is a particular tribe is responsible for this killing? After all, Bukuba Road community is in just north, and Irigwe people are mostly in Basa local government and in Yango, in Irigwe Chito, in Basa Anko. How are they able to draw a conclusion in a killing that took place in a metropolitan city like just and you single-handedly identify a particular tribe would the police come out to say that the killings that happened yesterday uh, yesterday in on sunday would they now claim that this is a particular tribe that is responsible for the killing all this while that our villages have been under attack the police have never come out to say this is a particular tribe that has been killing our people that when killing took place on Saturday, the police came out to say that the people are responsible. Right. This is very, very unproductive. Okay. This show how unbiased the security are in Nigeria. All right. Go ahead, Takwe. Mr. Chige Dodo, um, as our heart goes out to you, your entire community, and everyone who suffered loss, not just in this immediate incident, but the, the ones perpetual back-to-back -back incident that keeps, keeps happening. I saw the video, it was heartbreaking. I, I can't understand, I don't think you will help us understand, what, what, how can human beings be so evil and vicious to another human being? What would you say is the foundation of this? And I know that you've already accused the, um, um, the publicity team of um, the PRO of the police, whoever is releasing, making the press release, that any... Um, um, Statements yeah. might be if, um, inciting if you are stating categorically when investigation hasn't proven otherwise. So I, I believe that that's important. But what else could you think caused this? Like, what do you think is the foundation? And how can we deal with it? Because I, I just want to understand how people think. I saw a picture, a video, and I can't, I've not recovered, of someone taking a, a huge stone and throwing it on another human being. Like, who do We have the same blood. Please. You see, what I, what I make of this is when injustice is becoming the order of the day, human life will no longer value. I tell you the truth. Anywhere there is breach to security in any part of the world, it's likely going to have implications to any part of the world. And so I think in the past, security have not demonstrated readiness, sincerity, and objectivity in carrying out this attack. And so each time people are killed, no report of uh, a breakthrough in terms of arrests and trials in court are made. And so some of us are made to believe that they can go on killing spree and go free. And until and unless justice is done on perpetrators of these evil acts, evil will continue uh, to reign in our society. Unfortunately, as a people, we can say that more than 700 of our people have been killed in the last three years. At the moment, I was thinking that people should be calling it with people, sympathizing with them on, on, over the loss of their beloved ones, especially in the last two weeks, we have had about 74 of our people killed. What we should be expecting from government, from security agencies, are words of condolences, words of encouragement. Instead, the police that is meant to protect us is single-handedly telling the world that our people are responsible for this killing. And All right. we challenge the police to come out with the evidence to prove that if we're people in okay. a cosmopolitan place like Rubaro, that our people are responsible for this killing. All this right. is the honestly embarrassing in the 21st century that the police are supposed to be seen working hard right. to bring criminals to uh, uh, justice. justice. All right. <laughs> These are, these are really um, important allegations. Let me go on a break. When we come back, we'll engage the government official on this to see if we can confirm what um, Mr. Dodo is saying. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Staying with us, so we still have Dr. Makut from the government of Plato State. Let me come to Nubisi. I'm ready. Yeah. Yes. So, Dr. Makut, um, I want to understand first of all if investigations actually showed that these people were from uh, Uruguay. That's the people who perpetrated this act. That's one. And also, uh, what is the government doing for the uh, you know family of the diseased? Is there any plan in place at the moment? So uh, actually, um, the issue of um, name calling and, and labeling of criminals 
is what the, the, His Excellency uh, has fought against since he came into office. As far as the governor of Plateau State, uh, Simon Lalo, is concerned, the uh, crime is crime. There is no ethnic crime does, is not is not uh, particular to an ethnic group, to a religious group, to a, 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 a political uh, group, or whatever group. Criminal <coughs> crime should be called crime. So in this case, the style of the uh, the Plateau State government is that these perpetrators must be fished out. There is no um, uh, ethnicity uh, attached to them. And if investigations later on prove, and they are taken to court that this is um, a, a, a crime that was committed because of their ethnicity, because of their religion, because of anything, then they will have to answer to the law. So for this, uh, at this moment, the government does not want to encourage that kind of narrative because it is divisive. It is, in fact, one of the problems that keeps inflaming the situation. When people, instead of looking at crime and calling it a crime, they are owning it because the perceived uh, perpetrators belong to their tribe, belong to their ethnic group, right. belong to their religion, mm -hmm. belong to their political party or what. So and then on the, the people being, uh, um, uh, the people that were attacked, I can tell you that those who, are rest, who were rescued are being, um, uh, being, uh, uh, being uh, taken care of. And those who are in the hospitals, uh, the secretary to the government, the chief of staff and top government officials were sent by the governor to go to the hospitals, to uh, Plateau Hospital and elsewhere, to see that they receive the best of treatment with the Plateau State government is uh, um, um, taking care okay. of. Okay, let and me get it, let me get a few more questions uh, in for you. I switch. Mr. Rakut, I completely agree with you on the uh, you know not crimi um, tribalizing criminals and all of those things. So because of that, we should not mention any tribe. Mm. Instead, let's find the persons you know responsible for this. But what are you doing immediately to? to douse the, uh, you know, the, the sure. anger of the tribe supposedly attacked. So these people were returning from an Islamic event and also they were supposedly Fulanis returning to Undo. What are you doing immediately to, you know, to talk to your people the, or the Fulanis present in just so that they don't see this as, a, as an attack on their tribe but a criminal, a, you know, a, an attack, a criminal um, attack? Well, thank you very much. And let me just try to be modest and say that the kind of relationship the governor has cultivated with the people of Plateau State in the past six years is a pain off to the point that if not for the situation that the governor has shown that he's a man that embraces everybody, that he has no difference between uh, Fulani, Biram, uh, Ron, any tribe in Plateau, perhaps the situation would have been worse. Because you see, this particular incident is uh, brought with it religious co co uh, connotation. And these are people who are transiting from one state to the other. And so the, 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 the states were, were enlarged. In fact, uh, he had to call his friend, uh, uh, Governor Akere Jolu in Ondo State, to, dis to, to give him the first hand information. And if you notice, His Excellency uh, Akete uh, issued a statement where he himself does tension. And uh, just yesterday, the, the His Excellency summoned the, the, um, the Plateau Interreligious Council. It's made up of um, uh, the uh, first class traditional ruler who represents the, the Muslim community and the uh, former uh, president of the Church of Christ in Nations, uh, Professor uh, Pandai Yansat, who have already been, did, um, been mandated to go out and start engaging. Already, uh, there are engagements with the Muslim community in Plateau State who have been um, clearly uh, on the side of government, knowing fully that this, this is not an attack that can be associated to say it's an attack on Islam, it's an attack on Muslims. No, it's an, an attack by criminals and miscreants. That's what the Commissioner of Police said yesterday. All right, when Dr. Mamou, let me stay with you for a second. I would like to go to, um, to Mr. Chin, Chinge Ododo, but it's important to ask you, however, that security experts have suggested or uh, suspected that there might be reprisal attacks. So I see that you are trying to douse the tension. But whether we like it or not, these kind of situations incite people to violence. So what are you doing with the security operatives ac across Plato State to ensure that the communities are protected just in case of a possible reprisal attack? And, uh, uh, thank you very much. That is the, 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 the good news that we got yesterday that the uh, IGP has sent in a reinforcement uh, led by uh, DIG also to come to the state because one of the issues 
that the state has grappled with over time is the issue of um, capacity. Uh, uh, just some months ago, the, the His Excellency, the Governor of Plateau State, procured 200 uh, security motorcycles to enable security vehicle, I mean, uh, personnel enter to the hinterland, and of course, 50 uh, patrol vans, which were uh, distributed to security agencies. So uh, I, I, uh, already we have the peace building agency, which is continuing dialogue and, and, and engagement with various communities. But uh, in Plateau State is one of the states that has embraced community policing. As also, uh, we have uh, Operation uh, Rainbow, which is more or less uh, our own state police, if you like, that composes of uh, uh, various um, security agencies bringing personnel together. And of course, it's being sponsored by the state government. So the, uh, the, the, the Excellency has directed that every uh, uh, um, Okay, we, lo we lost audio with Dr. Mokud. Let's go to Mr. Chinge uh, We lost audio, there are, sir. There are... Okay, go ahead. Hello, sir. Yeah, but, yeah, but destruction of farm, uh, farm uh, crops and so on. So all that has culminated to the need for more personnel, the need for more deployment, and the need for the communities to also begin to look at what they can do to douse tension within them. They can talk... And that's what the peace building agency is being made to, to facilitate. Okay, go ahead, Tokwe. So, Mr. Chige, um, I want to ask you there are uh, speculations online that this attack could have been sponsored by people who want to just destabilize the community. Based on the, being that you've lived there, do you think that there are external forces who, maybe for political reasons or are profiting from the crisis? are uh, intentionally funding this crisis, and how do you believe it should be addressed? Well, that question should be directed at security agencies because they are the ones that are paid to obtain information, do intelligence gathering, and then tell the government based on facts on ground. But let me also inform our viewers generally that, uh, honestly speaking, most parts of the Middle Belt are under siege. We foresee a land grabbing agenda, and we foresee a calculated attempt at chasing out inhabitants of native communities in the Middle Belt, on the plateau, and elsewhere. Uh, what I want to say is, most especially to our security agencies, especially the police. You see, you cannot fight crime with a biased mind. You cannot find crime with a hidden motive. You cannot find crime while showing love and to others and then abandoning others. We have just been told that there is a special crack team from the first headquarters that have been sent to reimburse the security on the plateau. Where was the inspector general of police when hundreds of Iroquois people were being massacred and murdered? Where was the inspector general of police where our farm crops were being mauled, destroyed? We salute this effort, but we are asking, why is it that it does seem that a particular section, a particular people requires much attention than others? This is one Nigeria that the Inspector General for of Police has vowed and has sworn to protect and secure. And then suddenly people are killed. No word, no word of condemnation is coming from the first headquarters. And then something happens, immediately we see a sharp response. And I have words to the PPR of the police on the plateau. I know he has pinched us against the wall. He is painting us as evildoers. He is painting us as people who are wicked, who are barbaric. But Mr. Commissioner of Police, your spokesman has not painted or pinched us against God Almighty. There is an almighty God who is the almighty of all the police. He is mightier than you. If you think you can pinch us against the general world to see us as evil, I tell you, you lie, because the God we serve is not a God of evil. The God we serve is not a God that fears authority. He is a righteous, he is a just, he is a committed God that will always reward and punish, he will reward goodness and he will right. punish evil. So let it be known that if crime must be fought, it must be fought holistically, not right. by sectional or ethnic or religious right. sentiment. Mr. Chinge Dodo, I know that um, there's a lot of mistrust with the government, and this is not just about Plateau State, everywhere else in Nigeria. But is there anything you're doing to ensure that uh, the youths do not go back for uh, jungle justice since there is lack of trust in government investigations? 
Oh, we just lost them. Told that we just oh. on Zoom. But it would be great to hear, have, have him answer that question. Yeah. But clearly, there are two issues here. The Uruguayans are saying that, listen, they are, this is being put on them. Mm. And they've been, they, many they've of the been families morning. have been killed for years. And they've not seen response from the government thus far. However, when this clean happened, suddenly we've seen the rest of the governor. But the governor is saying that he has put, imposed the curfew. The security apparatus is in place to ensure there's no reprisal attacks and that they're on top of this. We'll continue to monitor this story because the truth is that two wrongs can never make a right. At all. Because we are trying really to resolve this issue of insecurity from all factors, from the uh, tribal issues, the religious issues, the ethnic issues. And we're trying to ensure that Nigerians don't take laws into their own hands, mm. even regardless of how... how um, happened. How just, in, in how, just, how, how much of injustice they feel. Yes. Mm. So, I, I mean, we'll continue to, the investigation will, will continue and we'll let our viewers know what um, the police officers are going to tell us about the investigation. And I hope that the suspects have been arrested mm. and lead them to actual um, get, the, the, get to the root cause of this matter. Once again, our hearts go out, the entire community of Uruguay yes. and uh, Plato State, and just pray. Um, and I know the Fulanis, that's what I meant to say. The Fulanis who lost their lives, they are the mm. ones that actually lost their lives. Our hearts go out to the entire community. Except those of them in Ikare, on those oh, states, Ikare. Uh, Ikare, on those states. Our hearts go out to their families and say that may God give them the fortitude to bear, bear this, this loss. horrible loss. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.